right now. never made it onto the show they they say it, it was yeah she, they were very very upset they like had apparently had like aprons and were like car- like literally carrying like large dead slaughtered animals and like goats heads and stuff everybody go everybody go This is Oliver Twix here, your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work. And we are talking to Molly O'Connell from America's Next Top Model Cycle 16, which I just finished binge watching. Like I literally just watched the last second of Top Model Cycle 16. I started last night. I watched it all this morning. And boy, do I have a lot of things to talk to Miss Molly about. Now listen, as I've said before, I normally wouldn't want to do a girl who's um, who's who's done a chat before because that's kind of like double dipping, you know. And I don't want to waste these girls' time and make them regurgitate things and things and things. But she followed me. We interacted. I was like, wait, well, maybe she wants to do it. And then you guys got involved. So I was like, oh, my gosh. Okay, well, let me ask her. She said yes. And now we are freaking here. I have a lot of things. You guys have a lot of things. We're going to get into the things of the things today. Is she here? Ooh. Hold on. Let me... Let me get comfortable first. I don't know if this is gonna work for me. Wanna be on? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hello. How are you, Mom? I'm good. How are you? Can you hear me? Ooh, can you hear me? I can hear you perfect. Okay, sweet. I always have issues. I had to steal my boyfriend's AirPods, so. Well, first of all, you look loved. Thank you. I did makeup for the first time in all of pandemic, so I'm just kidding, but. You look great. I like your eyeliner. Oh, thank you. Listen, <laughs> I post myself in my cerebellum, but still. I'm just going to sit back so y'all can't really get into the details of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of the things. Listen, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, with thanks me for having For me. my friends who are tuning in. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun. I mean, there's always so many questions. Uh, like, when I did the last chat, um, it went on for so long and there were still so many questions. I feel like my cycle just all of them, but my cycle has a lot of weird shit that went on. So a lot we'll of weird shit that it. went on. So hopefully this is the appropriate complete sequel to the first one. Hopefully. <laughs> yes. Okay, so listen. No. I'm just gonna jump. Well, I was gonna say jump face forward, but I don't wanna wash off my eyeliner, so I'm gonna jump toe for Toe yeah. first into these questions. Let's do it. Yes! Okay. <laughs> so, Molly, Sky Pierce wants to know Hi, Molly. Love Hi, you. Sky. You were one of my all time favorite contestants on the show. I have a few questions, and I kind of broke his questions up just so it can flow really nicely. So, this is his first one. Do you know why they decided not to do a regular casting week for Cycle 16? Okay, so I don't know, I don't know why they decided not to do that. I think I'm assuming because things were getting like a little boring. My cycle, they decided to just fuck with everybody and, and see how it panned out on TV. I think so. As far as um, not doing the normal casting, they just switched mm. it up and had that uh, where they did had the other girls. They told the other girls that they made it into the house and that we didn't. Mm-hmm. So I think they didn't want to, probably in editing, they probably didn't want to look like huge assholes. So they probably just cut a lot of that, um, of the stuff about the girl. You know, I'm not really sure. They, that was a big, that was a whole mess, that whole thing with the girls. So let me ask you this question because I, if my memory is serving me right, we still saw like clips of B-roll of you guys like still doing stuff. So from your end, did it still appear as if it was a normal top model audition week? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was pretty normal, you know, and, and I didn't, I didn't really know the behind the scenes stuff back then, you know, nobody really came out and talked about any of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like 10, 11 years ago. So 
I just figured, oh, this is how it all happens. And I know I don't, uh, ten, over a decade ago makes me want to die a little bit. But um, yeah, I just thought it was normal. You know, we did the little runway thing. We did the little shoot. They didn't, they didn't show like as much of that as they could have, I think. I think, uh, so I don't know what their, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. There was a lot of stuff going on, so. You know, I've talked about this in the other chat. I think one of the most sickest things ever done on a reality oh, reality TV competition show is to tell a bunch of girls, hey, you made it in the house. Step to the right. And <laughs> uh, like, I don't know why. I don't know who probably Tyra just was like. <laughs> um, like, I don't I don't understand. It was I think this is for good TV. <laughs> but then they realized how big assholes they looked and they were like Oh yikes! Maybe cut out a little bit of that, but it was so mean. And then we like obviously we made it in, but like I was so sad. I was like, you know, like a lot of girls quit their jobs and and came right. out, you know, and you quit your job to go out here for a month and a half. What job's gonna be like? Sure, just go on for a month and a half or whatever and, and be fine. So we all were like, oh, we just threw away like our lives for this bullshit. And then, you know, the roller coaster of emotions where they tell us we made it. But I mean, those poor girls, I can't imagine being in the room with them. I would have lost my shit. I mean, y'all, I did lose my shit just, you know, other times. So, you know, it would have been bad. I felt so bad for them. More, Molly, I would have told that place up. Ooh, I would have just Don't you throwing with elbows. With Tyra, why are y'all playing with me? Go play with toys, play with apps on the phone, but don't play with me like this. How are you going to tell me I made it to the house? I'm like, oops, psych, you did it. Just kidding. Yikes. Just kidding, <laughs> bye. Okay, oh bye. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was mean. It felt very mean-spirited. Um, and I, I feel like a lot, some of like the producers and like the cast, whatever people that were like, not the main people, but the kind of babysittery people uh -huh. saw what was going on. And you could just kind of see in their face, just like, like, they, I don't think they were it. into it. I, they were just like, oh, God, this is terrible. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know who, who signed that one off, but. We can only speculate. Oh, Matthias, too, wants to know, I think you said in Jay's chat that you kept in touch with one of the semi-finalists semi who were cruelly told they made it and then were cut. Did they ever talk to you about that experience? And if they did, can you share it with us? So, I don't really know if they... God, it's been so, it's been so long. Jesus, I don't mind. Um, Can I age you a little bit? Yes, oh, Jesus. So this cycle came out in 2011. Mm -hmm. I was in the 10th grade. Oh, I can't even know. <laughs> I, hate, I hate you so much. Me too, I, I, was, in the, I was in the 10th grade too. <laughs> and I graduated college. <laughs> I mean, granted, I'm a year ahead, but I graduated college now, <gasps> four years ago in May. Well, I'm still doing college. So. <laughs> Me same. I'm younger than you ish. Not really, no. But oh god. Yeah. Old. I'm old. Thank no, you're not. Botox. No, you're Thank not. That's Botox, man. No, you're not. Age doesn't mean oh. anything. Look at Naomi Campbell. She's still shutting bitches down day to day, day to day. Another Jesus. has she's been here. She'll you know, be for in her coffin just being like, yes. Still, still, still mm -mm. serving it. Um, back, back to the, back to Sorry, the we're like on a tangent of... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. The shady queen to me was about to jump out, but I said it's not time yet. All right. Oh. Oh, um, any, mm. any, any um, stories you want to tell us about potentially talking to the other girls who got cruelly cut? Um, I just really... They, I know that they were like taken into another room. Like we, so we were outside kind of in that little outside area where they showed us the pictures. And then they were like, okay, all the girls who got your picture come with us. And they took them inside. I remember sitting there being cold because I didn't have a jacket. And I was like, bring me my fucking jacket. Because, you know, <laughs> I, th I thought I got kicked off and I was pissed. I was cold. And I was like, why are we waiting? Mm -hmm. So I know that they went into another room. And I think that they were um, basically letting them down, telling them that they didn't make it. And, um, Ooh. Ooh, somebody should have put a GoPro on the wall. I know. I mean, you know, they probably had cameras and they were just like, this looks terrible. We can't show it. So I got I, I mean, somebody needs to find that footage. Life. Somebody needs to find the hidden footage. But 
Yeah. So, you know, I don't think anything too crazy happened. I think they really just were kind of taken back and told that they didn't make it. And then um, they did not have to stay. I don't think like when you get eliminated, you have to stay um, for a certain amount of time before you can go home. But I think those girls were able to leave. If I got, oh my God, if I was one of those girls and had to stay for like the month, the month and a half of filming. Doing um, nothing. No, yeah, poor girl. So I think they got to go home, thankfully. Um, Listen, guys, you guys who are watching, I'm drinking celery juice. Well, but you guys don't think I'm a lush right now. I'm drinking celery juice, Suja nice. organic celery juice. It's really he good. Poured some alcohol in there. No, you think I did? I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> it just looks so fancy. It wouldn't be my first time doing it, but I didn't do it this morning. <laughs> Very healthy alcoholic drink. <laughs> okay. So, Gabriella Jen wants to know, she, as in you, Molly, was sometimes portrayed as annoyed and a mean girl. But then I saw her doing Jay's chat, and she looked very smart and kind. How does she think about the way she was portrayed on the show? Um, they definitely replayed a lot of me being kind of cranky and stuff. I am a very irritable, cranky person. Um, until I'm like provoked or really angered, I'm super nice and chill. So that's why like, I seem pretty normal. And then like the second you, you know, you don't feed me for four hours and then try and interview me and ask me a bunch of annoying questions. Didn't this make you mad? Then yeah, I'm going to answer. Yeah, that fucking made me mad. So they, it's a lot of like provoking. Um, yeah, I wish they would have showed the complete sentences that I said. Um, a lot of times they would cut things. So I'd be like, you know, I really, you know, I really like Alexandria and I understand where she was coming from, but mm. she really freaked out today and that was not okay or that made me mad. And so they would just say, she freaked out today and that made me mad. And so, yeah, editing, a lot of editing, but also, you know, I, I have a very short temper and I was young, so I didn't really... Mm. I'm not good at filtering myself, obviously. So. Gotcha, gotcha. No, no, that, that, that's nice to hear you take responsibility for some part of it. No. Um, yeah, definitely. A little bit. Yeah. I do have a question because we, I've heard different girls say different things about like the food, the food breaks, bathroom breaks, and stuff like that. What was your experience of those essential things that humans need while filming Top Model? With, so with groceries, we were given like, 20 I think we got like $25 a day I think maybe 30 for groceries and like prescription literally just anything that we needed that was all we got paid um and so we would order groceries and for the most part they got our grocery orders correct but we weren't really in the house that much cooking like we were on set a ton and they would have these huge catered areas so that was good um but we would go you know they didn't like I feel like they picked on me a little more because they saw that I got very hangry. Um, <laughs> very, I'm get, I'm, get, I'm get really hangry. And so uh -huh. they would like dangle food in front of my face or I, um, I was like pretty severely anemic actually. And I was told oh, to shit. eat a lot of red meat. So I was always like, please bring me a plate like of lots of red meat and stuff and um, leaf, you know, dark greens. And they would like, bring the vegetarian girls their stuff but like forget mine which isn't the end of the world you know I eat whatever but it it was just little things like that that were kind of aggravating mm -hmm. and then when they would um do interviews I would just be starving and they'd be like four hour long interviews going over like the whole week stuff mm -hmm. and they would just be like oh we'll let you eat just after a few more questions just a few more questions so then I'm just like getting angrier and angrier and, and they played that up a lot for sure. Um, so yeah, they, they messed with us a bit with the food. Um, Dang it. Yeah. That sucks. I couldn't last. I can't do anything when my stomach is growling. Like I can't do anything. It really like, oops, sorry, I'm adjusting myself. My, my no, cat is in his cat box, like going to the bathroom, making noise right now. I can't deal. Um, what, anyway. What is it, your cat? What, your, my your cat's cat is moving? in. He's pooping. I can't see him, but I can hear him digging, and I'm just laughing at it. Sorry. ADD. No, my dog, my dog, every time I do lives, I don't know if she just knows I can't move or do anything. But mm -hmm. right now, currently, right now, she's, like, doing, like, a jungle gym. And she's looking at me talking about her. She's doing, like, a jungle gym. 
between every chair and table. Oh, just Park. bouncing? Parkour? Yes, I'm like, parkour, parkour. what is she doing right now? But Ugh, animals. They're gotta best. love them. Got to love yeah. them. So the fans Ugh. love when I do this um, speed round of all the contestants, and you tell me your oh, thoughts Jesus. and opinions on them. They love these, so I'm going to start. It's in the order of oh, um, elimination. Shit. So the first one up is Angelia Alvarez. She was the first one out. Dang it. So, I know. I really... I really like her. Um, she was like, I feel like she was portrayed a little weirdly. She's just like a normal, cool, chill, beautiful girl. She has an insane body. Like I can't, I like, I don't know why she didn't last longer. I really liked her. She was just like a chill girl that I would be friends with outside of, you know, mm -hmm. the show for sure. Um, yeah, I was sad she went home. Andre. I love her. I was very sad for her whole situation um mm -hmm. she was kind of quiet and um we didn't really realize all the shit that had gone down till like they brought it out of her and made her talk about it and we were like holy fuck like why are, I mean, not like why are you here but just like we would you know we thought we wouldn't be able to deal with that if we were her um so that was just um but she's really sweet very kind of like quiet she kept to herself i think that maybe was just the situation, you know. The situation at hand. Do you think um, watching it back and having filmed that some of those moments, those emotional moments um, that we did get from her, do you feel like it was a slight nudging from production to get her to react that way? Yeah, unless it was like her in the house with us talking about it. Um, yeah, m almost all of the emotional or whatever things were kind of nudged by production. Mm -hmm. um like me i don't go around saying i'm adopted and i have anger issues every 17 seconds but on the show i do so you know so it's like they they nudge you and then they just edit things and blah 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 but they definitely were nudging um her to get some you know maybe try and make her break down a bit for good good tv gotcha yeah. what about nicole i love nicole um she actually was one of the better like more known models before the show um i think they just didn't think she had a crazy enough personality i think she was too normal too stable and so they were like we're gonna pick the shittiest pictures of her and kick her out there is no way that cat butt picture was the best photo she had like that girl is fucking beautiful um she's extremely smart one of the smarter people i've ever met uh, so I really liked her. I feel like they screwed her over big time on her edit. And I feel like she would have gone a pretty, pretty far if they had actually picked good photos of her. Yeah. Someone just said down in the comments, I don't know how true, the, how true this is, but they said she got a Vogue cover. What is... Wait, Vogue Nicole, cover? That Nicole got a Vogue cover. I don't know. I, I don't know. Wait, what but do you they, mean a Vogue cover? Like the, the, ma the magazine Vogue. Oh, Vogue cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she did. And she's like in, I mean, she's done so much stuff. She's been in a bunch of magazines. She's like in all these hotels. They have like 20 foot long pictures of her on the wall, like in dancing in these gowns and stuff. She's been, a, she's done a ton of work like before the show. Um, and now she's like a, um, I think she does like neuro, like she does, no, cardiac, PQ, cardiac, nurse she's like a oh. like she's she's brilliant um yeah she's great they just they screwed her over with the edit for sure yeah but, yeah i don't i don't doubt that she got a vogue cover what about dominique dominique i loved she was so oh. funny um she was just like one of the goofiest funniest people like if i could just have her around every day she would just make me laugh constantly mm. um and she was so unique looking like with the freckles and stuff and just like her, just her skin tone and everything. She was so beautiful and unique. Um, I think just for like the more kind of high fashion-y thing that, you know, top model tends to go for, they, you know, she didn't fit quite as much or maybe she needed more coaching and they didn't want to give her that time. I think that was <laughs> the issue, sorry. But I love her. Um, I really liked like pretty much everyone. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if her casting played uh, was inspired by. And I'm so upset with myself that I cannot remember this model's name. She was in Fifth Element. She was. A, she was the runway coach. Mila Jovovich. Yes. Wait. Who? Oh wait. Oh no. Oh the um the no. one who was. Oh shit. Shit. Um. 
she, she, she was on Canada's. She was on Canada's top model. She's got she the that very too deep voice. I love her. She was the um mm -hmm. one of the flight attendants, maybe. Stacy, wasn't that Stacy? Stacy Ann? No. No, it's not Stacy. That's Ann. A, that's what someone. Stacy something. Mc... Stacy McKe that... McKenney. Okay, I was right with the M. Stacy McKenna or whatever. Yes, I, I wonder if her. they passed it Dominique to like to to, to Harold back to Stacy, which I she think so. She did have she did mm -hmm. have that look. Dominique needs to do that Fifth Element outfit for Halloween. That would be amazing. Do you still talk to her? This. I haven't talked to her in a little bit. I feel like maybe last year um, I did. Um, she's had children now. She's doing really well. Mm -hmm. And um, we're like friends on Instagram and stuff. But I, you know, I haven't talked to her like gotcha, gotcha. in depth well, We're going to DM her and let her know. She needs to be oh, yes. it for Halloween it's 2025. She has to. Oh, she my has God. To. What oh, about God. Sarah? Sarah, I love. Um, she's one of the most just genuine people ever. She, her. What, what, you know, they go by they now. I, I'm yes, sorry. shit. Fuck. They go oh by my God. they. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. You're fine. You're fine. I got you, girl. So my memory. I got you. You're fine. In the show is mm -hmm. of different. And I know they, I'm, I'm, do not, I'm like, ugh, I feel really bad about doing that. Shit. It's um, okay. We we got you. We got you. Uh, Safe oh space. No. We, I know. I never, know, I never want to do funny. that, you know, so I never want to misgender someone. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like 10 years ago, even now, just the trans community, LGBTQ, everything, it's, a decade ago, it just wasn't really, number one, understood, or no one cared to understand it, or it was very taboo, or mm -hmm. so they were kind of portrayed as like, oh, this weird girl with a rat tail, she's Ugh, let's just make her look like, you know, androgynous man thing. And like, I don't know. I feel like it's a little problematic now watching back the way, I mean, a lot of the episodes now mm -hmm. in all seasons are really problematic in the way things, but I mean, I guess that's every, that's how thing, you know, things mm -hmm. change and, and the outlooks on things change. But um, I'm, I was sad for, their edit and like the way that they were kind of treated and misunderstood really just in their self and like individuality and you know I don't know it was um I feel like uh they were kind of not as open as they could have been just because they were afraid of like how they would be treated or seen or just misunderstood by everyone um mm -hmm. so but i mean like i i love them so much <laughs> you know i found it so interesting um like i said i haven't done much research on you know how she lives but i did see like several blurbs that said you know she goes by the pronouns they um but it, it was so cool i think it was her last but her last panel um with the commercial and mm -hmm. all the girls who did pairs they they walked up holding hands but when she walked up and i don't remember who she was paired with was it you with in which one in the um in the sexy coffee commercial oh no um i wait but anyways she walked up holding the other person but she was holding them like like, like, yeah, like, I thought that was so cool. Like, I, I thought I it was so it. beautiful. I, it's yeah, just I, her I way. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, their way. God, mm -hmm. shoot. It's okay. It's Michaela, um, it was Michaela. She was, like, cuffing Michaela's arm, and, like, Michaela, yes. like, was draped over. Yes, I thought Michaela, that was so Michaela. beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, was what good. about Dahlia? Dahlia. Oh, my God, that freaking jawline. Yes, you we just literally, <laughs> literally just, it's just cut, you know, cut diamonds with it, like, Oh, and just Ugh. such a sweet girl. So sweet. Um, I mean, great model. I feel like they kind of picked maybe not the best photos for her. Um, I, I just feel like, I don't know, watching her shoot. Like, so, sometimes I did sort of see what the judges were talking about um with not having like enough whatever but i feel like they could have picked much better photos so that's always frustrating for me like i want to see all the photos that y'all got to choose from like what was you know like show that part of it so we know that it's actually genuine um 
because, I mean, she's just great. She's great. So yeah. I have I have two questions for you, um, mm -hmm. because I'm not in the modeling world, so I don't know shit. Um, when you guys take know. photos, do you guys get to see your reel? Like, can you see your like your your um your sheets? So it depends. Um, I don't think we really. Occasionally, the photographer would come and say, "This is what you look like." Mm -hmm. um, I need you to do this or, oh, look at this. This is great. Keep doing something like this because like you could be standing somewhere and they take a photo and like you think it looks a certain way and then you look at it and you're like, oh, whoa, I need to do something totally different. So that's really helpful when they do that and they do not always do that. And unless they come and show it to you um, on the show, at least they do not have a monitor that shows you each frame. And they don't show you afterwards. They don't let you go through. When I when I shoot normally, they do. Um, because why wouldn't they? It's not some competition where they're like, no, no. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's hidden a little bit. But they will occasionally show you what you're looking like to kind of guide you um, to get a better photo. If they want. If they don't, then they just won't show it to you and just be like, oh, that's great. And then you have a shit photo. I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. Um, what about Monique? Oh, Monique is, um, I speak to her more than a lot of the models from the show. I've uh -oh. seen her, I think, more than anybody else. Um, she is just, she's so different than she used to be, but like, mm -hmm. not bad. She's just mm -hmm. grown so much. Um, she's just such a funny person. Like, we laughed so much. Like, you know, we were kind of dickheads at some points with the Alexandria Journal thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, we just, we giggled all the time. I wanted to pop time. both of y'all on the ass. I know, we were, it was, I know, I know. It was a bad, it was a bad moment. Um, mm -hmm. I know, and then we felt so bad because when we saw it, we thought, because we thought it was going to be like, we fucking hate it. I hate it. Murder, murder, die, die, kill them, kill them, kill them And it wasn't. All. And then we were like, oh, <laughs> man, we really are the worst. So, yeah, yeah, we both felt really shitty after that. But um, I love Monique. She is so fun. I saw her 2018. We did a, a Fashion Week show together. So, I mean, she's great. And she's still modeling. Like, she's uh, – go check her Instagram out. She looks fire. I'm going to go look. You know, listen, oh if she watches this, I absolutely loved – how the editors always cut to her rolling her <laughs> eyes. She has the best eye. It, it, just, it, it was like, why is she rolling her eyes so much? It's so of funny. All time. She's so fucking annoyed. And they would just, like, one of, the, one of the questions I saw, actually, after the acting challenge where, like, that guy came up and we did the, like, kiss Alexandria on the cheek thing or mm -hmm. whatever, um, and we lost, they made us clean up some area mm -hmm. if you saw like and and mm -hmm. Monique is like poking things with a stick so it was not that dirty the producers literally went and just threw shit all over the ground yep and like kicked over chairs through like undid toilet paper rolls and paper towels and were like go clean up this area and Monique was just like fuck this shit like <laughs> fucking paper towel, like, you know, poking stuff, like kicking it into a bag. She, we were all so over it, but God, the comic relief with that girl is just amazing. She's so much fun. What about Michaela? The I, face. I said, from, I said from the beginning, I was like, if this girl's going to win the damn show, like just take one photo and here you go. Here's a million dollars. Like take my life, everything. She's just the brows, the jawline, the lips. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime eyes, face. Nose, it's just the hair. It's crazy, and she's just so sweet, and she's smart, and she's like, she's like her own person. You know, she doesn't like conform to like dumb, stupid shit. Like she does what she wants, um, and I and I've always appreciated that. Um, but yeah, when, when we got told that we didn't make it and that the other girls made it, I was like, okay, you know, I thought maybe I was going to make it, but Michaela didn't make it and these other girls made it? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? I was like, Michaela and Monique, they're in. No questions asked. And neither of them made it. And that's when I was like, maybe this is just the 
you know, a different cycle where they're like going a different route, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I kind of thought maybe that was the only time I had an inkling of like, maybe this isn't real, but, but I fully thought that I was going home. <laughs> so, but she's got the most epic face I've ever seen. Truly, it's just. Yes. Miss mm. Jacqueline. I mean, she makes my teeth hurt. Like, just the <laughs> sweet. Seriously, like, she's the sweetest little human. Everybody thought it was fake. Um, you can't fake that. No, oh my God. It's never that. ending. It's never ending. Um, and I'm like, you know, I'm sort of a pessimist and stuff. So I feel like I, like, if we were to live together, I might just be like, oh my God, it's just so much positivity and happiness and light like but she's just so happy and sweet and like just knows everything will be okay mm -hmm. and you know will tell you what you need to hear and just be so sweet she was very like naive and you know but that's I mean she was young and a lot of us were naive in different ways um but god she's just the cutest thing like we would all just giggle at her like when she did the sexy pencil drop thing for Nigel I was like that's like the most adorable yet like kind of the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Like <laughs> what's happening here? She uh -huh. just, I just love her. The hair, I mean. And the squeaky voice and the full lips. That yeah. photo with the the crazy for the lipstick, oh, with the lips like. To die for. So to good. die for. I love her. Kasha! Oh my God, Kasha. She, I don't know why I immediately just think of her skin. <laughs> we always were, cause she was the oldest out of all of us. Um, and she had better skin than the youngest person on the damn show. We were like, what the hell? And she's like, oh, I rub aquaphor on my face every night. And, la, la, la. and we were just like, what the hell? And she just had the most beautiful, clear, soft skin. She's so smart. She kind of like, mothered sounds weird because she's not that much older than us but she really guided us a bit like she kind of knew what the hell was going on she had been in like 17 magazine and you know Marie Claire I think a bunch of magazines like five six times um she did a lot of commercial stuff a lot of you know teen juniors stuff like she worked a lot um she now acts and stuff she's great she's really versatile um and smart and um yeah, I really liked her. I remember I made her, her parents are Polish and I made her teach me how to say, I want to be on you from Anchorman mm -hmm. in Polish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I still remember it. And I just think it was the funniest thing ever. So. I mm -hmm. think somewhere on the cutting room floor, there is an edit where she won <laughs> cycle 16. I, mean, I think so. I think there's like a whole edit where- I probably have an edit for, yeah. Cause she was well, so- I, Sickening. Like she would, it's like she performed well in challenges. She performs well in photos. She always found some sort of way to like stand out, you know, from whatever. Like I loved her, and I felt like when they sent her home, it was just like, we don't want you to win, so, so we got to find yeah, basically. right now. It was basically just like, uh, we, you know, we're, you're not going to be the winner, so meh. And it was like, why not though? And they, oh, with her weight, like plus size. I love how that's plus size. Like, give me a fucking Fiercely break. Fiercely real. <laughs> so stupid. Fiercely real. Whatever. Yeah, rena <laughs> rename it to whatever you want, Tyra. Like, you're still just shaming people, it sounds like. But anyway, like, they would, like, you know this girl's coming on the show. You know her size. Find her an outfit that fits. Don't try and shove her into some, some small outfit and then make her feel bad on national television because you can't fucking prepare shit or you don't want to prepare it to make her feel bad on television. Like that was some bullshit. They did that a few times and it was like, like just get the right size. What, what's your deal? So I don't know, I didn't like that. And I think that maybe was a part of like why they, you know, weren't gonna let her win or cover, I don't know. Cover Girl I feel like had a lot of say in things um, with who won, you know? But I don't know a lot about that. Okay. Alexandria Everett. Oh, Alexandria. I, I really, like, I really got along with Alexandria for m the most part. Um, I connected with her, like, we had a lot of similarities. Um, 
I mean, we've both suffered from like anxiety and depression. I have severe depression and anxiety. I mean, not daily bad. Um, so I, I understood a lot of like kind of her childhood trauma and just the way that she was, uh, mm -hmm. from, you know, my own experiences and the way that she like reacted to stuff while, I understood that it was still extremely frustrating to experience and see. <clears throat> um, she was never really like outright mean to me. Um, she was just kind of like rude and snappy at everyone. Um, and I don't know, it, it was just, and a lot of the editing, again, I'd be like, you know, I really enjoyed her or you know I understood where she was coming from but she shouldn't have done this and that really made me mad and so you know they they like edited that but so I think we were all just really young and you know I think everybody could use a little bit of therapy hell I'm in therapy all the damn time so I think it was just I think it was <laughs> just like it. her reacting to some maybe inner turmoil and being a little you know, I mean, so was I. I was a fucking obnoxious little brat on the show. So mm -hmm. I think everybody has their own way of reacting to things that happen. And I think that was her way. And I think it rubbed people the wrong way. So. And it's like, you know, I think finally with us, you know, discussing these things, people are taking into consideration, one, all of you girls were kids still. 18 doesn't mean you're grown. Hell, 24 doesn't mean you're grown. 25 yeah. doesn't mean you're an adult. You know, no. I really, I honestly don't think you probably don't really get there until you're like 30 something, maybe 30. I still months. feel like a damn child. Yeah. You know, and it's like, these are young girls placed in this pressure cooker of a competition in front of millions and millions of people, important people, and mm -hmm. they all are fighting for one thing. So of course, all of the nastiest things about one's personality that probably wouldn't show itself present in a normal situation is going to come out. Yes. It's going to come out. Yes. Yeah. Like when you're, it's literally pressure cooker is the best way to say, like, I mean, you just put people in this pressurized situation and something's going to explode. Something's going to happen. Like, yeah, you know, you, you film me daily chilling in my house. Like you're going to see me watching Netflix, but like you put me where I can't speak to any friends, family. I can't listen to any music. I can't write a note home if there are cameras around. Like, and then you poke and prod at us all. Then like, yeah, it's, we're all going to freak out. And yes. it's not something that we would normally do. So people need to understand that a little more. People kind of attack everyone. Like, oh, well, you went on to TV and you knew this would happen. It's like, we didn't know any of this. We didn't realize, you know, the aftermath of everything we had maybe a small inkling of it but not really so it's yeah it's, <laughs> we were young we were young and crazy young crazy kids what about hannah jones oh hannah i love hannah um she she's another person that i just feel like i would be friends with just without the show i talked to her a good bit uh, she commented on something like two days ago on one of my photos. So we, we chat a good bit. Um, she's doing well. She actually was on like a Disney show for a couple of seasons. She was killing it. Yeah. Like a, like a recurring role on like a big second. No, no, not second. I, I don't know. I don't want, I never watched it, but, <laughs> um, but she was on it. Like she's, she's killing it. So, you know, I love her. She's super sweet. Um, she got edited kind of as the crying girl. And to be fair, she cried a lot, but like we kind of all cried a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we were all very emotional and like away from our parents and away from our families, boyfriends, everything. So <clears throat> I think they, that was kind of her little uh, the crying girl. Yes. You know, I was watching, um, are you familiar with like other cycles and other girls kind of? Some, I didn't watch a lot after my, but before my, my um, shit, my ear pods are dying. No. Well, I can just take them off and then hopefully my audio won't suck. Hopefully, let's see. Let's try it out. Well, we'll wait till they die. Okay. But, Kay. um, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm forgetting her name. Sarah. Oh, guys, I feel so bad. Yeah, it's Sarah from Cycle 9. And she does these TikTok videos. Um, oh, she dark brown hair? Mm -hmm. she... Yes, yes, yes. I love her videos. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
And she was doing a video where she was like, um, uh, she was in a video where she was like, the bathroom rule was if you were in the bathroom by yourself, the cameras couldn't come in. But if someone else came, you know, the cameras could come in. And I, I, I'm paraphrasing, but she was like, she was like, you know, it's bad because, you know, I can't, Masturbate. I can't pee in peace. I can't crap in peace. I can't Masturbate. masturbate standing up. I thought that was so funny. I, but I'm like, oh my gosh, you can't do anything that you like to do. So of course you're going to no. go fuck crazy. Like, I can only- How are we going to masturbate? Like, listen, I can, listen. You know? Like, people think that's, saying... people might be like, oh, that's gross to say, but like, you people at home, if you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever, you're probably masturbating. <laughs> and then, you know, and if you're not, I don't know, you're probably weird, whatever. I mean, everybody does it. And then if you're put in a really stressful situation, you maybe want to release at night. And like, <laughs> you can't do anything. You're surrounded by girls and cameras that are like in the corners, like robot cameras moving, watching you at night. And you're just like, you can't play with you know, your No, it's no fun. So that's lucky. I probably <laughs> would get sent home like maybe third because you know, at the point at which I can't eat what Exposing I want, yourself. I can't drink what I want, I can't fucking watch what I want, I can't listen to what I want, I can't it's, want what I want. You get I, nothing that you want I unless you win the fucking show. I just would implode yeah. within. I was just melt. We got yeah. a, someone saying, I guess I'm weird then in the bottom, they don't masturbate. Hey. It's okay. It's okay. We won't hey. judge you. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Brittany Klein, the winner of uh, Michael 16. <clears throat> so I said throughout the show, if you just line everyone up and you say by face, mm -hmm. I would say, Michaela, look at that fucking face. <clears throat> when I, in the first casting thing when they had us all walk like on the airstrip and I saw Brittany take that first stomp I was in her face laser eyed I was like oof that's the bitch I gotta look out for mm -hmm. the entire then I saw her do her photo shoot we each had five frames killed every single one so I was like okay wow okay she really like she's really good we did the bubble challenge murdered it and then I get to know her and she's like the coolest fucking sweetest smartest person down to earth from bumfuck nowhere but like knows shit you know like she just gets life and so I just really appreciated her and I said from the start if I have to be beaten by anyone it better fucking be Brittany mm -hmm. and if it is I will be okay with it and you know I lived, with her. I lived with her after the show. We were roommates. So um, I've spoken to her. Um, we've spoken. Um, <laughs> and of course, I invited her to do one of these. And, you know, she told me her reasons why she didn't feel comfortable just yet doing it. But she said, she said, if you're going to talk to anybody or ask anybody questions about me, she felt very comfortable with it being Aww. you. So that speaks a lot to you guys' friendship and uh, yeah, your relationship. Yeah, I, mean, I love her. Mm -hmm. I love her so much. She's really just uh, a friend for life for forever. I mean, I, f I felt that the first second day of the show. Like, you see us at the bubble challenge. We're already mm -hmm. arms linked, you know, crying, staring into each other's faces. We just bonded immediately, and, and I I'll feel that forever. She's just an amazing person. She's an amazing mother. Um, she has an adorable little son. Um, <clears throat> she's just great all around and i'm so proud of the person she's become so fuck yeah for britney <laughs> like fuck yeah, I'm, for I'm, britney. fuck yeah for britney fuck yeah so vlad wants to know do you know if yeah. it is true that dominique decided <laughs> to quit but they covered it up because andre just quit it last episode so they told her she was going to be quote unquote eliminated so I don't know specifically that. I do know that she maybe was, I know she was feeling like she didn't want to be there or like not really feeling, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like she kind of wanted to leave. She just wasn't feeling up to her potential or whatever. But I don't remember anyone saying like, oh, she, you know, Audie's going to leave and then, and then you can go. Um, but they may have done that behind the scenes and not told us. 
and then I never spoke to Dominique about it. So I'm not really, I'm not sure, actually. Gotcha. But I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> mm. Sky Pierce wants to know, do you know why they took Michaela's weave out without any mention? Which I've noticed a lot in Top Model, but they kept, re <laughs> but they kept redoing yours. Was it for drama? <laughs> Forget that part. <laughs> Answer the part about Michaela's hair, because we're going to get to your hair. <laughs> so I think Michaela had some issues like I did, like, some big ass crazy heavy weave on her head and um I, I actually had to go to the doctor i had to be put on antibiotics i had sores on the back of my neck it was synthetic hair i was allergic to it it was bad 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 they took her hair out it was horrific um they took her hair out because i think she was having some issues but they didn't want to be like you know well we're gonna take hers out and then we have to take molly's out i think they wanted to extend my trauma <laughs> and my hair ordeal and then kind of just sweep that under the rug and hope nobody really noticed because they took my weave out put the same weave back in with a different weave stylist left it in for a week and then took it out after I in confessional said if you don't come down in five minutes I'm taking these scissors and cutting it out myself. And five minutes later, producers came down and they were like, okay, we'll take it out for you. I literally was like, I'll chop it all off. I'm not fucking around with you. So I had had it at that point. But yeah, I think they just, she was having issues too because they didn't know what they were doing. Like the people at Preve were great, but they brought in outside hairstylists who didn't necessarily, they weren't that great. I don't know. So she must have just not, you know, she had a shitty week. I was looking at everyone who got a weave during makeovers. Everyone who got a weave. And I'm so sorry to say, on Cycle 16, it was crap. Everyone, they, they all looked dumb. Everyone who got weave sewn into their head that day was crap. Mm -hmm. Fucking Dahlia's hair had this nasty, inconsistent, chopped thickness at the bottom. They didn't blend Dominique's hair out. It was like, what, no. was like, what was the whole purpose of dyeing her hair and trying to blend it in if you're not going to blend it in? Actually blend it in, yeah. Yes, no one who got a weave, and I'm not a minister of weave, so I don't know any, I don't know the first thing of, Me but either. I do know what looks right. And none of that looks right. And everyone none who took a it. needle that day and sold that crap into those people's scalps, you should have a needle ran through every finger, nail. Yes. And it attached right here so you can think about your transgression. Think about it forever, forever. It, it was, I think it was just another like ploy to get good TV, you know, let's just mess with everybody and give them bad weaves and have more drama, I guess. But like the other girls, they were bad, but they were like decent enough to work with. Mine was just like, ooh, put a they hat on her head. Oh, no, they were all horrible. Yeah, no, they were all horrible, but you know. I'm far, Horrible. far away. I'm far, far away. They're okay. Lady Mills wants to know, Molly, I love you on the show. Was Alexandria really that bad on the show? What really <laughs> happened during the blow up between Brittany and Alexandria in front of the judges? Okay, so, I mean, she, she was she was a little aggravating sometimes and snappy and rude to some of, like, the people behind the scenes and stuff. Um and would kind of, she was just like slightly obnoxious. So was I though, I don't, you know, like I'm an obnoxious person, but so I think that rubbed people slightly the wrong way, but she was also really great, um, really nice, really helpful. You know, we all had like friendships with her, but she would, she would very mood swingy, I think. And so we were all kind of a little scared by that. That's, you know, just didn't want to set her off, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the thing with Alexandria and Brittany, I think at that point, um, Brittany and really everyone had gotten a, a little fed up with Alexandria, the way she was acting and how none of the um, producers or really judges realized that. And then she won the car and we're like, nobody sees this. And she wins the fucking car. And so Brittany was just- Great like, reality TV. Hold my- let me hearing, tell you something. You know. I don't know if that was by accident. They did that on purpose, those motherfuckers. I can guarantee you that. Are you, you kidding think, me? Okay, because... I okay, mean, she took a good photo. She did, she did take a great photo, but... Whatever it was, that whole sequence is what 
producers and people who work in reality TV pray we for. for yes. Of course, oh, oh, out of it was everyone golden. who wins the role model photo shoot, it is Alexandria. Yes. And who was the photographer? Nigel Barker. And God not it, only Nigel. does she win a spread or wherever the hell she got, she wins a brand spanking new car. Yeah, fusion. Genius. <laughs> Bitches, yeah, fine. so and yeah, that they that was the best setup for a blow up <laughs> I've ever heard of. So, you know, bravo to you, motherfucker. Oh my god, but Lord, yeah. So she just was she was mad. Um, and we were all mad, and I was back there. Yep, 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 she's right. You know, I wasn't yelling, but I was just like, yep, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're all mad. Um, this might be dying in a second, but um. So yeah, they they showed most of it. Um, they really showed most of it. The part that they didn't show all of was the panel when she, Brittany had her like panic attack. But um, yeah, we were all really probably about 15, 20 feet away from each other, kind of quietly talking shit about Alexandria, basically Brittany was, all of us, but um, she heard Brittany and then, you know, the blow up happened. Um, and yes, she did really get the car. She got the car. Um, I can hear you. Yeah. So she heard us and uh, went from there. But yeah, Nigel and like all of the people, the clients and everything were there. And that, that was the issue that, you know, they... No. Wait till you get home to freak out, maybe. Yeah. And you know, um, if it happened the way we saw it, which was you guys over there talking amongst yourselves and mm -hmm. then she heard you and she said i can hear you and yes. if, if that's how britney responded to her unfortunately britney was in the wrong she was in the wrong while yes. her feelings about alexandria were valid to her yes and she was completely in the wrong hmm. yes no i agree with you and and i think britney even ag agreed with that too she was like you know i i feel the way that I feel, but I should not have said that then. I shouldn't have said that to her. It was inappropriate. She did apologize. Um, I think, you know, she just got heated up in the moment and very, you know, really upset. We were all really freaking upset and she just couldn't hold it in anymore. And, and yeah, she, she even admitted that she should have um, waited to say something or not have said anything at all, you know, but. You know, I don't know if I should be saying this, but, but I'm going to say it. Um, this happened to me yesterday. This has nothing to do with top model, but I want to teach you children out there. Um, listen at me, you children. I'm going to teach you guys something. So I was on set and I was filming. Um, I was filming green screens for this web series, and they, I'm creating an intro for them. So I was filming oh, green screens of their um, cast, and all of a sudden, the cast breaks out into a huge verbal argument in the studio space, and I'm standing there like what is going on and the talent who was in front of me oh yeah i did start i did I just, good I okay i'm gonna get this on the camera dude. i did i did but the talent who's standing before me i can i could see the um the breakdown happening and i'm like steady trying to tell him you know focus on me right now like it's me you and my camera and like focus on me and he just went crazy and after you know all they calmed it down because i was gonna leave you know miss oliver had already got her money so i really was gonna go but you know i said yeah, i right. let the children gather themselves but i told him i said listen you never know who's standing around and no matter what this is a play this is a job you know and you don't ever want to come to your job and your opportunities and bring that stuff here as valid as you may feel um you have to focus on what is important and right now, the job is what is important right now. Yes. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people, especially in reality TV, they kind of feel like they can always act however, because it's their life is reality TV. So like, you know, I, I, I feel like I see that a lot more with uh, people in that profession or whatever, who kind of like just act out and, and freak out in front of you know, whoever is working for them or working around them or, you know, it's kind of crazy. Jesus. I want to see this video, though. Oh, I, I, Were I, any I punches you. thrown? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. There was none Fast. of that. But you'll hear me in the back. Hey, focus. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey. I was trying, I was like, hey, focus on me. Hey, hey. And then hey, it just I'm got here. to the point. Oh, my um, God. That's amazing. 
<laughs> okay, so Lady Underscore Mills wants to know. Um, okay, no, I already asked that. Twin Twin Girl Fifty One. What's the breakdown with Britney edited at all? I feel like the judges really attacked her. Her being nineteen <laughs> or twenty at the time in the industry, it seems like they never taught the girls what is professional and what's not. So you spoke about it a little bit earlier. What was it again? Just to wrap it up, that we potentially did not see during um, Britney's breakdown in panel. So they showed, I would say maybe like thirty percent of it. So you know, they show her. They, she gets like yelled at basically um and she gets upset and she has high anxiety so do i um so i fully knew what was I, I fully knew what was happening i have panic attacks Me um, too. yeah so you get it and but a lot of people don't understand that um and so a lot of people on the panel didn't understand that tyra didn't get it and so she starts to <laughs> hyperventilate and and she you know what else are you going to do when you're literally surrounded by cameras and lights and people being attacked in your own mind having a panic attack feeling like you're having a heart attack so she she left because she you know she I need to leave like that was that was his most that was the most she could do get out in in the most professional way that she could do it without like going in a fetal position on the floor of the panel room basically so she went to the back room took a you know a Xanax or whatever to help with her anxiety chilled out she literally was in fetal position like you know, there were like in her face with cameras, you know, and this is not a good place for someone with really bad anxiety who, in the midst of a panic attack. Like, so Tyra kind of treated that as just like, she was being childish and she should have been able to kind I of control herself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, when she left, I was like, no, she's having a panic attack. Like she's, she needs to go chill. You like this. Yeah, I said it. I, yeah, I literally was on stage. You're like, why, why did she just leave? And I'm like, she's having a panic attack. She has to go, like, she's going to chill, chill for a second. They're like, oh, okay. So we all kind of waited for her. And <clears throat> I can kind of see them talking amongst themselves. And Tyra just looked a little, like, annoyed with the situation. And it's like, her mental health is on the line. Give her a fucking minute, dude. So she finally, you know, calmed down, came back out, which I think is amazing. Um, I would have not ever wanted to go back out. She came back out, apologized, kind of took it, and just, you know, I mean, at that point, after that whole situation, what, what really could she have done, you know, like, except for apologizing? And, I mean, she was just having such a shitty moment that was caught on camera, and nobody was really acknowledging the mental health issues along with it. They were just acting like it was immaturity and not being professional um but also with your question no they don't really teach us what is professional and what's not professional to do until you do something wrong and then they're like oh you didn't know that you idiot and it's like no i'm fucking 18 sorry like i didn't read your fucking uh -huh. memo you sent everyone so yeah um definitely there were some things they didn't show, um, but she just really had to go calm herself and they were kind of just not being very understanding of her mental health at all with that. And that pissed me off a lot. Yeah. I'm still pissed about that. Yeah, I was watching it and I've, um, I've had moments like that where it's just like, you just, you know, you just have to go breathe. Like you have to go you... breathe now because you feel like you can't breathe. You literally feel um, like you have to go to the ER. Yes, it's, it's a, oh, I can't, I really can't, des I can't describe, like, the Horrible. feeling. Like, you really feel like you're about to die. Mm -hmm. Um, And I echo your same sentiments. I thought it could have been treated just a little bit better. Um, like, Tyra could have gone better. back there, even, and said, like, Girl, you know Tyra was not you? coming from, coming from I know, she wouldn't, wouldn't have, her. but if I were Tyra, I, you know, if anything, just to make me maybe look good, are you, are you okay? You need a Xanax out of my Pez dispenser? You know, like, just kidding. But I'm, <laughs> I like, you know, do something. Don't just be like, oh, immature little bitch crying, running away. It's like, Tyra, have you never had anxiety? Maybe, I guess not. Do, you know, I don't know. But I, I didn't like how that was handled. So, meh. Sky Pierce wants to know. Guys. Moving on, moving on past that. Sky Pierce <laughs> wants to know, do you have any idea why this was the only cycle of top model 
where only five girls got to go to the international destination. Was it usually six? Usually it was, yeah, usually six. six. Yeah, usually I, six. I have no idea. Um, maybe, was it maybe because like Andre, but they kind of did the, she left and then they didn't eliminate someone else. So would no, you, it was it not mess up the. No, oh, oh. Did that, that maybe mess up the numbers maybe. of how the elimination went? And so then they wanted the five. Maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. Because I don't know. Maybe because Andre quit, it probably messed it up. I think that, yeah. I think sometimes when stuff like that happens, they have to like alter. But that means they had an extra ticket to go over this. So they could have just taken. Well, well, let me ask you this. Did the Eliminated Girls go to Morocco with you guys? No. Once we went overseas, I think they were able to go home. But for that like whole month or whatever of filming, the for you know Angelina had to Angelia had to stay for that whole time, and everybody else f until that month ended. And then once we flew to Morocco, I believe ninety nine percent sure that they were able to go home. And then in Morocco, obviously the people you know people who were um, eliminated stayed in Morocco until we flew back. So. The fans, the fans are pumping us to tea right now. So I see something about supposedly Jacqueline lost her papers. Someone else is saying that's why they put in that extra wedding photo shoot at the last minute. And they're saying Jacqueline didn't have her papers. Now I'm gonna go try to find Jacqueline. If Jacqueline didn't have her goddamn papers, and that's why my oh, favorite no. when I was little did not go across the waters, Jacqueline. It better be a good reason why you didn't have your papers. Jacqueline was my oh. favorite in the cycle. She was my favorite. I would be so sad if that was the reason. I don't remember hearing Because I was that. like, they, had, had they, they budgeted memory. an extra girl to go over there. So would, take I mean, Jacqueline over there. I never even. Damn. Because it was a pain in the ass to get the, all that papers and the vaccination we had to do a lot of crazy shit to get just to get over there and like all the visa blah 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 bullshit so i mean i can see how that would have been an issue that that might have been it oh no i wish you would have come that would have been amazing what's the last time you spoke to jacqueline where is she God, it's been a couple years i feel like uh maybe on facebook we just were like oh i hope you're well um I, yeah i don't know much about what's going on with her sadly mm -hmm. um i need to check in on her because she's just I'm gonna go try to, to find her. See if she's Jack married with Jacqueline. 20 kids yet on a farm or something, being adorable. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I just feel like she was just, I didn't want to <laughs> Molly, you are type of girl. I love her. Guy here also wants to know when you first got to Morocco, why did they have you all randomly go to the designer? I'm not gonna pronounce that because I will mess it up. And wow. walk for him. I mean, I really loved it, and his designs are spectacular. But I wonder why it wasn't a challenge or something of that sort. I think it's it's because we literally we got off the plane, jet lagged as fuck. I bet they did not let us do anything. They were like, "All right, here we go," and they took us to this place. So I think they just wanted to be like, "Look how big of a shit show these girls are!" Right off the plane in this weird thing, you know, wearing like a burlap sack of dresses. Like some of them are cool. I looked horrific, and I kept falling over my dress. I was like an idiot, but like, you know, it was it was cool. Um, yeah, I don't know what I don't know why they did that. I think it was probably just to be like, "Oh, look what you got to do when you're a model. You get right off the plane when you're jet lagged, and you go do this, and you don't have your shoes. No, no." And so I. I I think they just yet another thing to throw in the mix and make us look bad. Possibly fail. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Naomi is saying Brittany once told that production started to punish girls who didn't win the challenges in Morocco. Is this true? What was the punishments like? What did they do? I I, I vaguely remember. They had to clean something like they, they kept they did weird stuff like that. And then one in L.A., I know they had to walk back like a mile and a half or something. They had to walk three. Sarah, George, George I suck. Um, Monique, maybe I think after the acting. I don't remember. But three people had to walk back from wherever we were to the hotel. So like they would literally if you lost a challenge, they would just be like, OK, you're walking home. Or, okay, clean up all this stuff that we threw on the ground that wasn't even here before. So I'm not sure exactly what they did overseas. Um, damn it, I wish I did know. But I, okay. I 
can guarantee you they did something because someone's saying eat meat or something and i, I saw well, it before they did make us eat the goat brains i don't know if that was like a like a you know punishing us um because i mean you know i could have just not done it if i really you know and but like britney doesn't like stuff like that and she like she got sick later she's throwing up and stuff from the goat brains i spit it out i couldn't eat it it was disgusting but um yeah i think they just kind of made us you know do weird stuff um but i i feel like something they made britney uh, i can't remember it now but I, but so, i i know what you're saying is mm -hmm. true because i remember britney mm -hmm. said something about it so we'll have to ask her eventually Sandra Salazar, in Jay's chat, she said, production picked at them. What did you mean by that? And is there anything you would like to share? Um, so they really just would, in interviews, they ask you questions. They'll be like, how, oh, cutting up, okay, wait, going back, cutting up an animal. Okay, wait, going back, yes. When they lost, sorry, when they lost the challenge, they made them go to like a goat slaughterhouse and they made them move dead animal carcasses. And they were like covered in their blood and like guts and stuff. They had to move the heads. They had to like, I may, they may have had to cut things. I don't know. But they had to like handle dead carcasses um, of what goats and stuff. And Brittany is like, she's like, she might be vegetarian now. I don't know. But she's, she's not a meat person really. She was so upset by that. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty fucked up to force people to do. So yeah, that they did do. I completely forgot about that. Um, that's back crazy. To what, yeah, fucked up. Back to what we were saying. What was I saying? ADD, I forgot. Okay, hold on, guys. Help me out. Because I just, was that, was that on the show? Did I miss that? Like, did, did we see that on the show? I don't, if they did show it, they showed like, God, like a, half second of it i don't think they really showed it because it, it was gross like my friends out there watching was that shown on the show i'm sorry i'm having like see, a mandela yeah. effect right now. never made it onto the show they they say it, it was yeah she, they were very very upset they like had apparently had like aprons and were like car like literally carrying like large dead slaughtered animals and like goats heads and stuff Okay, because that's why I was sitting here like, my brain was trying to remember, did I see that or did I miss that? Okay, we didn't see that. Oh, that's, oh, yikes. Yeah, a lot of yikes. Oscar Silva, Molly, after the finale, you had mentioned, when I get home, I'm going to eat a pulled pork sandwich. Did you ever get to eat that pulled pork sandwich? Oh, I had that pulled pork sandwich and probably like 150 more. Um, <laughs> hell yes. That that was my favorite food. It's still one of my favorite foods. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm, I can hear you. Okay, my, my things are weird. Um, yes, I went home and I immediately got that uh, with my Leonardo DiCaprio uh, circa Titanic bowl cut. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, I ate so many pulled pork sandwiches. I had so many naps. Wait, he says, wait, I skipped my question because oh, no, we were I on a question you, and then I went you. ADD. Okay, we got you. We'll go back. I got you. Um, yeah, I had that fucking sandwich. I just had one a couple months ago when I visited home. It's I just barbecue put it in. I love barbecue too. I love a nice rib. I love a nice Ooh. brisket. Brisket. Oh, I love, apart. love brisket. It's like, I'm like a connoisseur of it. Like, give me, me the too. juiciest. Me too. And my true, my true test, if if bar if the meat has been barbecued, great. Is if I can eat it with no sauce. Oh yes, if it has that much flavor and moisture, yes. Yes, and more and than if moisture. you just fork it and it just oh you know falls apart. <gasps> Don't even know. Mm -hmm. How was it walking in that final runway? And Brittany is doing all of this tipsy tumble topple topple things. Oh my god, I always forget that she fell. Um, God, oh, so I my walk I don't have a great walk I don't like my walk um and Miss J was like you look like a linebacker when you walk and I was like oh so I tried to be like more bouncy and sexy when I walked and mm -hmm. you know and they were like you know give it oomph or whatever and then I did that and then in my critique they were like you were too bouncy and it was like so should I walk like a linebacker or should it be bouncy mm -hmm. Or should I just like do the worm down the runway? I don't know, but <laughs> whatever. But so it, it was 
I was terrified. I was uh-huh. absolutely terrified. My shoes were probably a size and a half too small, but thank God they were open toed. So my, you know, talons were hanging over the end, but, um, it was terrifying and it was hard. They threw the pedals all over the ground. So, I mean, I almost fell. That's why she fell. They threw pedals on the ground and she just like hydroplaned on a pedal. And so when she, I walked and I was like, you know, two feet to the left and then she walked and slipped and she smashed into the wall, like, mm-hmm. like hard. And so in my head, I was just like, you know, like, I mean, I need to help her up, but it's going to look weird when they see me grab her. But like, you know, fuck it. So I just, you know, I helped her up and then they made us redo the walk. We had to do the whole finale walk Mm -hmm. again and her foot's all swollen and fucked up. And I was just like, I don't understand why y'all have to do that, but whatever. Um, They made you guys redo it just to still show her falling. They made us redo the bubble walk because nobody fell the first time. (gasps) They said, walk faster. Is this new tea? I've never heard this before. They this sprayed, new tea? I heard they sprayed Pam on the runway so we would slip because they had producer people, whatever, attempt it. And they were like, it's too easy. So make it slippery. And then they made us walk faster. So we had to do it twice. So the time that you see when all of us fell was the second time. What you tea, say, Molly? New tea, new tea. Yeah, two times, two <laughs> times. So they again. they wanted us to fucking fall. Do that, do that little new tea dance again. Two tea or wait, new tea, new tea. Make it again. <laughs> oh my god, that is horrible. <laughs> I know, right? That is like so someone really could hurt themselves. Yikes! So Tomer a lot of stuff. is saying mm-hmm. India winner of cycle twenty three oh, said India. that production. Production bribed the contestants to do certain things, like they needed them to talk about the photo shoot. So they told them if they di- if they do that, they'll give them more phone time. Did did anything similar happen in Molly Cycle? No, but I wish I probably would have been like, yeah, let's talk about all this stuff. No, um, the only thing that happened like that, which was actually the opposite of that, was because I cussed so much. And you have to blur out my mouth. It costs money to blur out the mouth, like a lot more back then. I think it's probably easier now that apparently they asked everyone to stop cussing so much. And then the cycle after mine, they, um, I think they would cut phone time if you cussed too much. That's what I, I, I was told I created the like cussing jar rule because I made them blur my mouth out so many times. Oh, I, I will be kicked off because I curse bad. I know it's bad. I just can't help I it. I'm a like, horrible cursor. And it's like, even when I'm doing these do. chats, I be wanting to curse, but I'm like, I can't curse too much because, you know, I know, you know, whatever. But I, it's fuck shit. God damn it, motherfucker. No. They say there's studies that people with higher IQs cuss more. So. Well, I curse a lot. I curse bad. My boyfriend is like, why are you cursing? I'm like, because I fucking want to. It tastes good in my mouth, bitches. It does. <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> it tastes good to, to let a shit out every now let me tell you something for, let, let, take a quick break from these from these questions listen if you out there have pent up energy and you don't want to play in your figgy or stroke your um whatever ah. your willy in the words willy? of um in the words of selfie sumner from cycle 18 oh, curse God. let out a bitch just scream scream Ooh, let it out say a fuck a flail shit, around a god my favorite one is god damn it god Damn it. And Some people watch. hate that, but I say it all the time. Watch. You'll feel better in life. You bastard. And then, you know, you know, you can start mixing up stuff now. Oh, I, I string together the weirdest shit. <laughs> like, chick fucker, bitch, cunt, whore, slut, motherfucker, <laughs> asshole. Like, just, it makes no sense. And it's like, what, who are you even yelling at? I'm like, the microwave. I'm yelling at the microwave. It's you know? fun. I like it. It's fun for me. It's fun. Like just yeah, get say, it out. Who cares? God the words. damn it! <laughs> You're like See, I'm laughing. It feels good. Just curse. You know, I said that when I have children, I'm gonna let them curse. I'm, we're gonna choose a day. It's probably Fridays. You can curse all you want at the house. You can curse all you want. Just let it and out. And they're gonna run around saying the weirdest shit. And it's gonna be okay. Just let it out. Let it out. <sighs> um, Jamie Benson, she got a lot of first call outs and was on top since Morocco. How did she feel when it was announced that Britney won, even though Molly performed slightly better 
And they cut her hair again in the finale and basically told her she lost. Do you think Britney was a pre-select? Do I think Britney was what? Pre-selected. You I know think that possibly like theory type thing. Possibly, I I know that CoverGirl probably wanted Britney more than me because I mean, look at my CoverGirl commercial. I look like the freaking psycho. Like, you put me in a dress and I'm like, buy this lipstick. <laughs> and, and you know, Britney's like, ah, oh, la 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 la, so cute. And so I I'm not a super commercial person. Mm -hmm. Um, it's hard for me to be that way. Um. Photo wise, I mean, if we were going by portfolio, hands down, I won. There's, I let them I know, no Molly. Issue. Let them know. Sorry, I'm no. I mean, she takes great photos, but like, I won. I won with the portfolio, but she has a better walk, and she would do better commercials. So for CoverGirl, she, you know, she would fulfill their contract better than I probably could have. IMG also, though, we met with IMG, and Ivan Bart liked me, and he, I think he liked. Britney well enough but he, it seemed like he liked me more maybe um but I think CoverGirl maybe has the final say I'm not really sure but um yeah I was I was very hopeful with my portfolio at least and then with her falling in the runway I was like there's my in there's my in and then you know uh, I was like at least if I'm gonna lose you, you have to cut my fucking hair <sighs> my hair did you got were you guys pressured to cut your hair in I mean, I, I didn't have to, but I thought I was going to win. So I was like, cut it off. I'll buy a weave. I don't mm -hmm. give a shit. Girl, and you were so still thinking about buying weaves at that point? I would have been. Well, at that, I mean, I, I didn't, you know, I just, I didn't want to have a bowl cut, but I just didn't care. You know, I was like, uh, you know, I'll, if I win, you can shave my head. I don't care. So I, I was fairly certain I was going to win. So I didn't really have that much of an issue with them cutting my hair. And then they're like, 30 minutes later, oh, by the way, you lose. Fly home from Morocco. And I was like. <laughs> so then I just put my hoodie over my head. Hannah saw me in the airport and was like, who's that hot guy over there? And then I turned and she was like, oh, that's Molly. That's Molly with short hair. So like Hannah totally thought I was a hot guy. Um, but nice. yeah, it was it was a shit show. And. I, I kind of thought I was going to win, but um, I don't know if it was pre-selected, but I, I definitely know for like cover girl purposes and all that, she was probably a better fit. A better fit. Mm. Yeah. You know, you may not have liked the shortcut, but when I saw you girls okay. at final panel with the shortcut, well, if you got to the shortcut, I was like, well, damn, can we redo the whole cycle over and they take photos with this hair? Because I want to see what that fun. looks like. Yeah, that it could have been fun. fun. Um, I didn't really leave it like that for very long. I actually shaved one side I, of it. Oh. And uh, left, I was just like, let's go edgy and weird with it. And then I dyed it platinum blonde. So like, it didn't really stay. I I literally grew up with a bowl cut. And then I was like, I'm never mm. cutting my hair this way again. And then they gave me a fucking bowl cut. And I was just like. They Man. gave you a bowl cut and then they eliminated your ass and said, go home, bitch. Yeah. So uh, that, that, <laughs> that stung a little bit. Oh, no. Okay. Got another question mm. for you. Um. People were a lot of questions about why were you so emotional during that last panel? Um, I think I was just so I knew like I had a chance of winning it, mm -hmm. but also a chance of losing it. And it was it was just it's literally like I mean, I watched this show weekly for year I mean, since it came out, I watched it every week with my mom. We were obsessed with it. I loved the show. I had wanted to be a model since I was like eleven, twelve, and I was like four feet tall had a bowl cut and like gap teeth. I was so weird looking. And so I just always wanted to be a model. So like in that moment, it was literally like 50, 50 chance. My dream will be fulfilled or it will be fucking dashed. And my life is over basically. So I was just so like, oh, it might be me, but I was really, I'm so pessimistic that I think I was just very afraid that I wasn't going to win. And so mm -hmm. I was just, I was a mess. I don't know. Mm, full on mess. I hate watching the finale episode. It makes me depressed, actually. Aww. Yeah, but you know, it happens. But uh, yeah, some... it was scary. Hmm? I'm sorry. No, I was I was gonna say I read somewhere about you being casted for All Stars two, and then there was a switcheroo. Can you touch on that for us? Yes. So they asked me to do All Stars two, and I was like, yes. And so the first day of filming for All Stars or All-Stars 1, not all, 
Just the All-Stars. All-Stars yeah. one. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, All-Stars no, like, one. All-Stars two. No, I'm not. Gordon and Slip, um, guys. I don't know. Hold on. Let me clear it up. I don't know if there's an All-Stars 2. Yeah, I don't films. either. I've been I don't Googling. know anything. That was just a slip in the brain. Yeah, no, I've All been Stars Googling one. and hoping. But yeah, I don't know about it, too, either. Um, If they do, y'all better fucking call me. But uh, for, yeah, for the first one, I got asked to be on it. And then the first day of filming was in public, like a live, maybe a runway show mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And so people in the public would have seen the contestants. That first day of filming was the day before my finale aired. So if I were there and people saw me, they would know I did not win my cycle. So it was a one day conflict, I was told, and then they chose Alexandria instead. That's what I was told, so. I mean. I really wanted to. I mean, so I remember in real time when All-Star, when the All-Star stuff was going on, there were pictures circulating, but you know, me, uh, in social media now, I mean, uh, 24 hours, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have made no difference. Like, the people were still going to watch. No one gave a fuck like that. And I mean, I mean, no tea, no shade. I love Top Model. We're all here because we still love love Top Model. Yeah. But Top Model during that time, I remember in real time, people wasn't even really checking for y'all like that. No, that, so... was, that was why they were trying to revamp it and make everything so crazy is because people, it was just dropping with the ratings. They were trying to make it cool again. Y'all so, could have I mean... let Molly on. Y'all could have let Molly on because no one really. I would have had fun on that. I well, actually, Molly, I'm, I'm actually glad you didn't go. I'm happy yeah. you didn't go because, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy you didn't get caught up in, in the in, in the in, in the snares and turmoil of of All Stars One of Cycle Seventeen. I mean, yeah, it was a lot. That was, that was definitely a crazy cycle. Oh God. Robbie M wants to know. I like when Oliver always asks, who's your favorite judge and who's your least favorite judge and why? Mm-hmm. Lay it on me, Molly. That's hard. So probably Nigel's my favorite. It's really hard for me to say because I really love Mr. J as well. And I, I don't know if I have a least favorite. Hold on, I guess what's going to be mean. Tyra's my least favorite judge. She's just the least personable and like mm-hmm. nice to you she doesn't seem to genuinely care nigel is just the sweetest and he's hot so like hey nigel mr j i probably learned the most from mm-hmm. because he was in every photo shoot and if i did something you'd say you know pop your back put your chin up do this find the light do that so i literally had him teaching me for like mm-hmm. however long i was shooting every time we did a photo shoot. So I I feel like he taught me the most um, and he really cared about us. And I feel like Nigel did as well. I've seen Nigel twice since the show. I've run into him randomly, once in Amsterdam and once in New York. And he is just so down to earth and nice. We still chat, like he liked my photo the other day. Like he's just a great person. So it might be a tie with them. Miss J I love, I just don't think Miss J liked me very much. I don't know. My walk what about wasn't Andre? Great. Andre, I mean, I almost wanted to say Andre was my favorite just because, like, what a personality. Like, I mean, it's fucking that Andre. Like, you know, I, I'll Icon. put him in my salon, you know? Like, mm-hmm. he's just so fun. Um, but I think watching overall, like, not just on my cycle, watching overall all, this, all the seasons, it's going to be, like, Nigel and Mr. J. But gotcha. Andre, I mean... He's fantastic. He's just so sweet. Hannah H wants to know, um, has the reality TV stigma hurt you when trying to book jobs? Yes, um, definitely. I've had a few jobs specifically requested because they saw me on the show, but I've had a lot of people, um, when they hear that I'm on Top Model, not want to book me. Or my agent has said, don't tell anyone you are on Top Model. Um, Or when I went to go meet with an agency, they were like, don't tell them you are on that show. So people in the modeling industry don't take it very seriously. They think, you know, it's just some dumb reality show where they just make people like yell at each other and, you know, take a decent photo. Whereas a lot of us actually do want to work. So I'd say it maybe has hurt my career more than it's helped it. 
but that's also because 10 years ago, Instagram, it was barely even a thing. Now they like will post their Instagram handles. Now you can find it. They have, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. So I, I feel like it's easier to make it now than mm -hmm. it was maybe 10 years ago. And now I'm kind of just forever the angry girl on top model. When then when I work with people, they're like, you're not even mean and angry like you were on the show. And I'm like, Fuck. so it definitely has hindered it a bit. Um, but mm -hmm. I have I have gotten a few jobs because of it. But so mm, not great. No, no. You know, my experience and my experience came again. I was in the 10th grade. So how old is that? That's what, 10 years ago? So I was what, like 14, 14, 13, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. I was like, you know, watching, I was like, I never understood how Molly has this resting bitch face and this shit on top of her head. Yeah. But she always takes amazing photos. Like, it always takes amazing photos. And now, and 10 years later, I was binge watching it yesterday. And going back to us talking about how top models just love to drive things home. They just they just keep stabbing it. It was like even in the last panel after your cover girl commercial show, the first thing they're like, all I saw was a mean girl. All I saw was I was like, oh my God. At least wrap her story up nicer than this. Like get like just <laughs> duh. I know. I was all uh, to be fair though, I was miserable that day. Um ugh. They just, but they also like their vibes were very, um, like, we don't really like you. You're okay. Oh, you seem lazy and like, oh, and you're fake. Like, just seemed very, like, I don't know. I just, I didn't feel like they liked me, which I guess is like, I don't need everyone to be nice and like me. You know, that, that's dumb for me to say, but I just, the vibe they gave off made me not feel great and I was already not feeling great and I was scared you know and nervous and it was freezing so it all kind of compiled into like you know these whatever but um yeah I mean I definitely have an angry face if I'm not you know or if I'm just like sitting there thinking about something like mm -hmm. this is me just literally Oh, I've gotten it too, so I understand. Doing nothing. I That's understand. nothing. If you want a real face, you know, I'll, then you'll probably cry. But like, it's so people just assume I'm angry all the time when I'm really just chilling. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. Okay, we already talked about Andre. Okay, here's a to this question. Federico Singer wants to know what was your relationship like with Tyra and what is it like now? And he also has a um another question to that, but I want you to answer that first. Okay. Um whatever you see on the show is what our relationship was. The only interactions we had were the what happened on the show. So she seemed like somewhat genuine when she was talking to you, and then like if the cameras kind of turned off, she she didn't really acknowledge that you were even there. Like if she's standing like, you know, a foot from you, she's not gonna just be like stare at the wall but like during panel and stuff if they're not filming or you know like she did that photo shoot of us and she seemed nice and like I was you know that was a cool day and like she talked to my parents during the finale and that was nice but I felt like it was very um just disingenuine for for the cameras and after the show she didn't contact me until I did Jay's chat and then she commented on one, and I said in Jay's chat that she doesn't contact any of the models unless they can make her money or do something for her, like Winnie Harlow. And then she came onto my thing and was like, I'm so proud of what you've done. And I was like, that's curious timing, but, or maybe I just, you know, got jogged in her memory again, but it was a little strange. So there is no relationship. I have, there's no relationship with her at all. I have more relationship with, Mr. J and Nigel by far. Um, I actually speak to them. I'm following them and I'm followed by them. Tyra doesn't really care. So love you, Tyra. Um, j just so I can get this right for myself and my friends out there watching and who will watch, are you saying that um, just to go in chronological order, that you did a Jay's chat and on Jay's chat you commented that she doesn't really contact the girls unless, you know, they're, you know, in the things of the things, doing the things of the things. And then you say after that chat happened, you got a comment from the yes, mother. Like within a week. Yeah. <laughs> it it was 
I mean, there's no other, I don't know what other explanation for that there would be. So she must have seen it and seen that I said that, or maybe someone said something and then she was like, oh, maybe I need to pretend, love you, um, pretend. I don't know, but whatever, you know. But yeah, she, she really, I, and I don't really know if she's talked to anybody else from my cycle. Um, so we're not going to make this for her. <laughs> Sorry, Tyra. <laughs> On to the next question. Pit Flick wants to know, Brittany wrote a very long Instagram post about why she quit modeling. Has Molly read it? And can she relate to it? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, my thing is tied. So sorry. Um, I did read it. I vaguely read it because it was a few years ago. I mean, I understand it. Like, I she's always sort of been not of that world, kind of with that energy and vibe and like all this stuff going on. And there is a lot of negative energy and like just rejection and stuff and and she wants to do more intellectual things and like you know that's if that's where she's at then that's where she's at that's where she is like and i mean that's great and i'm happy for her so i completely get that like mm -hmm. get mad that oh she squandered her modeling career or this or that but it's like or if you actually knew her you could say she squandered her whatever else career by doing modeling. Mm -hmm. Like really know what she's capable of, what she can do, what she wants to do. So, you know, do whatever you want to do. Um, and she seems really happy. So I'm happy for her. And you know, I, I think that's so beautiful. You know, a lot of times people who watch you guys on television and you know, they see all these fabulous things you do and people that are at home aspiring to do those things or would love to be a part of it. It's like, you know, when we see someone who doesn't follow that path or is okay with, you know, like Bianca being a, you know, being a high school teacher and things like that. We're like, oh my God, you guys gave all that up to do that. And it's like, no, people learn, people grow, people self-discover, people have priorities, people have happy places. Like these are still people. And just because you're in front of a, let me tell y'all something, let, uh, you know, I don't, I, I have celebrity clients. I've, I've been in places, I've seen the things um, whatever, whatever. Just because a person is standing in front of a camera and getting makeup done every day does not make them happy. No. Oh, if anything, it's it's the opposite. I find a lot. So yes, some of the people oh, who are your friend, your faves, and this is me saying I've seen them with my own two eyes. Me even too. Mm -hmm. Are unhappy. Like they have all the money, they have all the access, they can have whatever they want in this world, but they're unhappy. And I think in Britney's case specifically, since we're talking about it, it should be celebrated, it should be respected, and it should be something that should inspire other people. Like, do what it is that makes you happy and be okay with setting boundaries and not stepping outside of that. Exactly. Like, uh, would you say Bianca is a school teacher now? Mm hmm. Yes, yeah, I think she teaches high school. I love that. Like, mm -hmm. why can't you do that? You have, like, people on Survivor, you go on Survivor, you win Survivor. What? and they do something else, or are you gonna, you're not living on an island eating rice every day? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm doing other things because like people are multifaceted and you don't have to just do one thing that only has like a four year lifespan in modeling, you know? Like yes. we have brains, let us, you know, not that you don't use your brain in modeling, but like you don't use it as much as some other things. So just let people do what they want. Like mm -hmm. I'm going back into nursing school, like, you're, you're going back to nursing school? Yeah, so I did pre-nursing for three years in Atlanta, and I just applied, and I'm taking the HESI exam, and I'm going to nursing school, so. Oh, congrats, Molly, congrats. Yeah, so, like, just got to do what you want. And, I mean, if I can model on the side or part-time or for however long, I'd love to. I mean, I love modeling, but, you know, I'm not going to sacrifice, like, my money and stability for chasing a dream that may not be there for much longer. So, you know, you just mm -hmm. let's stick about it. Great advice, great advice, Molly. Great advice. Um, one last question <laughs> that I have um, is Steph is asking, can you ask her about her experience on the Bravo reality TV show, The Low Deck as a guest? You, 
bunch of questions about this. Uh, okay, so um, my friend asked me if I wanted to come uh, to Thailand on, like, they had some extra spaces on, on the boat. And I was like, sure. Um, and so I went, I had never seen the show. On, I downloaded some episodes and on the flight to Thailand, I watched the show and I was like, oh, Jesus, this is fun, but like, what have I done? And I was like, as long as I am not Brandy, the drunken Brandy chick, mm -hmm. then, of, then I'll be okay. So I just go and, um, I mean, I really just got like 11 a.m. We got on the boat. I started taking tequila shots. So I apologize, everyone. Um, it was a three-day bender. But yeah, I made out with Ashton, one of the, one of the cast members. Um, you know, I just, whatever. I live my life. <laughs> um, there was a big blowout right before I got on the boat with Ashton and um, Kate, like, in a van. He got, like, very angry and, like, punched a window or something. And everybody was very angry about that. And I had no idea about that. I had no idea about it on the boat. Like, they can't just say, oh, Molly, this happened two days ago before you came. Like, you know, that's illegal. They signed contracts. So I had no clue until I watched months later the, the episodes airing. And I was just like, oh, fuck. Like, I mean, Ashton was so sweet to me. Like, you know, great to me. Nothing ever bad. Mm -hmm. So nice to me but seeing how he treated her i was like fuck and then people didn't really don't understand that like i wasn't aware of that i'm not going like oh yeah i want to make out with the guy who got really angry and punched a window near some girl's face like no i was just having fun in thailand so i had a fun experience it was great i'm still friends with ash and i'm so great friends with all of the girls and i stand with them fully um but yeah, it was an experience for sure. It was mm, uh, tasty, 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 tasty. Drunk, bougie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, girl, why is my Siri talking down here? Okay, listen, I'm going to turn it over to the fans. As you guys know, we do this all the time to um, you get a badge and I will ask her a question live here with Miss Molly. It just keeps us organized because we can't, we can't, we can't answer all the questions that every questions. You got shit to do. I got shit to do. It's Sunday. I know I, I probably may go get me like a nice little poached egg with some shrimp and grits up from somewhere. So get a badge and then I will ask your question live right here. But Molly, let me ask you this while the children are figuring themselves out in the comments. Did you just celebrate a birthday? I did yesterday. Okay, so listen, I was in your story and I couldn't understand, I couldn't like figure it out and maybe it's me. I, I was like, is it her friend's birthday or is it her birthday? So I, so can I sing happy birthday for you? Yes. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> I need some space. Okay, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Molly. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Most people cannot sing that song very well, so. And I must ask you, can I give you the black version of happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Molly. Happy birthday, Molly. Happy birthday, happy. I can't believe I'm singing that high right now. It's 139. I'm like full voice screaming right now. Do it. Oh, I love that so much. So okay, guys, drop your questions below so I can ask Miss Molly. Okay, so Koki Dot, listen, Koki Dot, say, <laughs> oh, no. You know who you are. When you were in the bottom two with Jacqueline, how did you feel when you didn't book? Oh, wait. I'm assuming they're asking, how did you feel when you were in the bottom two with Jacqueline? And then talk about the Lana Marks campaign. Am I supposed to be able to see? No, no, girl. You sit back. I'm doing oh. all the hard work. Uh -huh. so, um, with the whole ghosty thing, I was a little frustrated because I actually made it to, I think I made it to the, Four out of five, I believe. Uh, yeah, I made it to four out of five. Um, but they kept all saying I had, like, resting bitch face or whatever. Like, two of them did. And then two of them were like, oh, we like her. Um, so that was a little frustrating. I mean, I get, 
like I get it. Like I can rub people the wrong way when, it, when I'm nervous or well, I'm not super like happy. So people are like, "Ooh, yikes!" Like she's not very great. So I understand that. Um, obviously, nobody wants to be in the bottom two, especially not with Jacqueline because she's like the cutest thing. Um, was I? Wait, I wasn't in bottom two with Jacqueline. Yes, I believe they put you in the bottom. Were you in the bottom that week? I do think you got. I do think you landed in the bottom. Yeah, you were in the bottom with Jacqueline because. I you were going to, you were going to, the, Lana Mark said she was going to book you, but then she saw that you weren't, like, happy or anything. For Jacqueline, I'm sadder. Mm, yeah, the Lana Mark, damn, I was sad about the Lana Marks thing. I really wanted that. Um, she, yeah, she said she liked me, but I had resting with Trace. I don't know if, like, I wonder if production was like, just bring it up. Bring it up. But, um, whatever, you know. It was, it sucked, because I, I, I felt like I made it at least pretty well to the places for being like geographically challenged um, and having a stupid, slow male model driving me around in a smart car. I was like, wanted to punch in the face a little bit, but um, whatever, you know, go sees, I guess are not my. Which is okay. Edward underscore Archibald underscore Spats. But I was asking, hi, Molly. You still, you are still one of my favorite of all time. You're my spirit animal. If you could give Molly and a and TM any advice, what would it be? Hmm. In, 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 in top model? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Definitely, like, they love personality, but you don't, like, you don't want to filter yourself because... They want you to be open, but sometimes I wish I had filtered myself a little bit more. You need to find that balance between being like interesting and fun and being obnoxious and annoying. Mm -hmm. Peter on the bratty part sometimes, but as for that personality, that's a huge thing. I mean, you can send some girls home for having no personality, even if they're beautiful. So that's a big thing. Also, studying posing, lighting techniques, like different posing. They love a weird angle, you know, make it just a, a strange angle, make some negative space, you know, like when broken down doll, I mean, it, it works. So definitely study magazines, study your favorite models, lots of high fashion stuff do your walk, record your walk, watch it, um, you know, watch YouTube videos. And the personality thing is key. Just try not to be too, because uh, they can always edit you to be a little. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's hard that, you know, no matter what you edit you to be a little crazy. So you want to just find that balance. Good advice. Good advice. Matt just will wants to know how heavy or uncomfortable was the jewelry you wore during the crazy four photo shoot? It was a there was a lot of jewelry and it was pretty heavy. Um, the most uncomfortable thing was actually the dress. I have very broad shoulders, mm -hmm. um, like like swimmer. Should I guess I don't look that big here? But so the line of like where the shoulder ended was about here. So if I moved my arm up, like I, I could not move it past that without the fabric probably ripping. Ripping. Really like, you know, in the sequin non-stretchy dress, that was the most uncomfortable part. The second uncomfortable part is I also have massive hands and fingers. So like all the rings and stuff, um, I always, even in Aaron Wasson's thing, I had to wear like all the man sized rings. <laughs> But uh, so it was, they were hard to get onto my hands and like my wrists, the mm -hmm. wrist blows, like I'm big boned, I guess. I'm just kind of hilarious. Um, so it was a bit much, but it was an epic shoot. Uh, it felt like it was going terribly. Um, I thought I did horribly. Jay was like, oh, like, oh. Mm -hmm. and I was like, he was like, why are you growling, Molly? I was literally like, uh, like growling with the jewelry. And I thought I did terribly. And then I saw my photo and I was like, oh, okay, shit. So it goes to show you like, unless you can really see your photo, like the feed of you gets into your head. So mm -hmm. 
I thought I did horribly and I got, I think, second best photo because like, Jacqueline had that amazing, like, lipstick photo. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, but that I, I loved everyone's photo from that photo shoot. Like, oh, it fun. was really good. Fun. Fun shoot. Kevin H. Meese, um, Kevin H. Meese, has she met any contestants from any other cycle? I have. Who have I met? I met uh, Christiana. I met her at a casting. Mm. I don't know much about her. I think she's beautiful. Um, so beautiful. We've we chatted a little bit on social media, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't really know her. Um, God, who else? I've run it. I've run into a few at castings and not spoken to them. Um, oh, she is very light skin, half dark, black, blonde, Afro, B name maybe. Oh, don't get me the line. I'm sorry. She's so beautiful. I can't remember her name. Met her a few times in New York through some friends, but yeah, not not a ton. Um, I've chatted with a few. Mm -hmm. like, um, India, uh, you know, I've chatted with a good few. Lisa, I talk to all the time. I have never met her in person, but I chat with her all the time. She's great. Um, so yeah, we definitely kind of all connect. Oh. Gotcha. And Martin is asking if you could go back and do anything different during your top model time, what would it be? Again, with filtering myself slightly more, I maybe would have said things just a little differently. Although, you know, who knows how they would have edited again. Um, I felt like I could have just been a little less cranky, you know? I mean, but to be fair, they fucked with me a lot, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, I think just, I mean, I was so young. It's hard to really say, would I change things? Like, yeah, if I went back now, a decade later, it'd be a lot different because, I, you know, I'm, I'm very new. Um, yeah, I probably just would have been a little more mature and tried mm -hmm. to understand the situation better and maybe spoken to Alexandria about the issues more than, like, talking shit in confessional. Um, yes, grown woman stuff. Maybe make a fake smile <laughs> for my for my ghosties. <laughs> Pretty Ricky, what they call me is asking Molly, love you. You're my winner. Do you think Brittany one hundred percent deserved the win? Ooh. I mean, it's hard to say one hundred percent because, like, I wanted to win. I think portfolio as I was stronger, but I'm not gonna say she didn't deserve to win. She won fair and square. She had a better walk, much better commercial. So I think commercial wise as well, like not just the video commercial, but like in the whole sense of modeling commercial, um, she hits both, you know, she can do the super high fashion and the commercial, whereas I'm more kind of just high fashion edgy. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And so I think she maybe just hit a few more boxes um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think she definitely deserved to win. I think I would have been an okay winner too, but, mm -hmm. um, I think, I think we definitely had a good top two. Um, one of the best, my, my favorite top two, honestly, oh, my I favorite mean, top two, because I honestly didn't know who was going to win and both of you guys were badass. It was, uh, I, it was hard. I really didn't know either. I mean, crazy, crazy. Ter um, Tariq Carroll wants to know, was there ever a situation behind the scenes where you noticed the judges or production showing favoritism towards any of the contestants? Hmm. Not really. I just saw them maybe turning a blind eye to Alexandria's outbursts. Mm -hmm. They didn't really treat anyone If anything... I don't, I don't really think they were treating me extra nicely because in the end, they actually didn't do anything. But when we did the landfill shoot, it smelled so horrible. So horrible. I bet. Vomit. We were all gagging. And so all the photographers and everyone had the stuff they could put under their noses. And so I was like, bleh, bleh. And, and Mr. J came up and he was like, I'm going to try and get you girls some of this stuff, okay? And when he went to go try and get it, production was like, no. Make them smell the smelly shit 
So like, I don't think that was like preferential treatment. I think that was him just trying to be a good human and then productive. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't think they really, maybe in later cycles, like with the bride, <laughs> yeah, they didn't do that to me. Um, they just like would say, we'll give you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if you answer this question. <laughs> won't starve you if you say words um so uh, annoying but yeah neon black music wants to know what was the full tea and drama between dahlia versus alex and did it end at the kitchen argument okay okay i don't know if people actually know this it was my chicken it was your chicken <laughs> molly it was your chicken <laughs> It was my fucking chicken, you guys. It wasn't even Alexandria's chicken. No, it was my chicken. And I was like in the background, just like. <laughs> hey, Vince. Why do you think I put the fuck? I know how to put chicken in the fucking fridge. You don't put it this way. And I was like, don't be about me how to put chicken in the fridge right away. And like, so I just was like backing in the corner, like no one can see me. Like the guy from Family Guy, I'm just gonna disappear yep. into the grass. <laughs> that was, yep, it was my chicken. <laughs> yeah, completely my chicken. And then they just freaked the fuck out. Um, and I think like, I think everyone eventually chilled without like, chilled out with Alexandria. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the editing that happened on later, like later on after kind of that big outburst, mm -hmm. it, and edit it chronologically to be after that to make it seem like we were still in, as annoyed with her as we were in the beginning, even though a lot of us had talked it out with her and maybe felt differently eventually. Because um, I could tell they, they moved some things that I said before that outburst and before we had our talk to afterwards. And I was like, that's fucking because at that point I had made my peace and we whatever. So they definitely moved stuff around a lot. Ooh, yikes. Soren Kemp wants to know, what did she think uh, about being called so late for the B photo shoot? That was such a bullshit placement to me. I agree. I was, yeah, I was like terrified because the photographer liked me. Um, the feedback I got was great. You know, I didn't think my photo was that horrible. Um, I mean, you know, a little funky, but like I had bees on my head. So mm -hmm. high fashion, like it's all weird as shit. Like that's the whole point. So, you know, I was trying to make like weird angles with my collarbones and stuff. And the guy was like egging me on. So, I mean, I'm, you know, you do what the photographer does to an extent. And then they're like, oh, you stacked. We're going to ask you. This is bullshit. Um, so I was, I was not expecting to be called so late for sure. Um, I didn't think it was gonna be called first, uh, especially once I saw Hannah's crying shot. I was like, oh. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that was frustrating. Um, I didn't think I deserved to be that low on the, on the call. Dear Live Journal's asking if you could say, now, why would you waste the badge? Because, you know, I always ask the girls that. I'm not going to close out with that one just, just yet. Um, but you did ask another one. Dear Live Journal, who was your favorite photographer to work with? God, oh, see, this one's just, this is a hard one. There were so many insane, Russell James, the, fir the very first one, that, that was like one of my most magical shoots. Russell James and Nigel Parker, hands down, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And I got to shoot with Nigel mul multiple times. Um, and just the photos from Nigel, I like. Mm -hmm. Not just like the experience of shooting with him, but I also love the photos. Russell, I was so scared. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And they were like, yeah, just act normal backstage. And I'm like, like, what's normal backstage mean? Like, you know, I don't know. So like he made me feel comfortable enough to where I could finally start being like, oh, now I kind of get it. Like be normal, but, you know, not normal. And so mm -hmm. that was my kind of like break into understanding, I don't know, the photography on the show. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I didn't expect to 
on top of that first episode. That's why I cried. I was so excited. And I was like, I just want to tell my mom. So I call my mom and say, I got the first photo and the first mm-hmm. shoot. And she would just cry with me, but I couldn't tell her. Um, so that one, I think, just has a special place in my heart, for sure. And the photo of me is epic. And then just Nigel. Nigel. Yeah, he's... I have a question. Um, how many photos from your cycle were you actually able to use in your um, post-top model career, in your portfolio? So a lot of them they actually don't like. Um, and it depends on where you're modeling. Like if I were in Miami, I wouldn't use any of them. I would need to go take a bunch of like swimsuit photos or mm-hmm. photos or more commercial photos. If I'm in LA, you know, more commercially, whatever, I can maybe use a few. If I'm in New York, it's going to be like a lot of black and white, you know, edgy studio shots. So they do love seeing like editorial photos from like your published work in magazines. They love that. Um, but when they're just looking like to book you as like a blank canvas face, they want your basic test shots that were shot in some dude's Brooklyn apartment at, you know, 4 p.m. on a Sunday with no makeup and like whatever, you know. So those in New York, typically, those are the photos and like digitals and stuff. But um, I definitely used like the camel shot, I think. Maybe weren't like a lot of Nigel's photos were usable. And then Russell's, I mean, it's just my face. So mm-hmm. Russell, um, but like, you know, the one with Kasha, Kasha's in it. So can't really use that one, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I mean, not as many as you would think. Uh, you'd think, oh, I have these amazing photos. I'm going to get booked. But it's like, you know, can they really go in and see what my face actually looks like when I'm right. with, you know, scarves wrapped in my head and like seven sets of eyelashes so it's i think it depends on what you're getting booked for um and what they're looking for so because you get you have different books for different agencies different locations that you model different countries everything so okay so i have two questions for you before i ask my final question because we've been on here for almost i think two hours now girl what'd you say got all the tea here Thank you. Listen, I want to know what is your take on um, what we now know was like a lot of tension going on behind the scenes um, that Mr. J. Manuel talked about during his Jay's chat. Um, I also want you to talk about and brag about your post top model career, and then I'm gonna come in with my closer, and then girl, we gonna curse and go eat barbecue chicken. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Wait, first question, Jay. So I I was not aware of really any of that going on. I knew that like Mr. Uh, or Mr. J and like Nigel, they got kicked off or whatever eventually. And I don't know, all the whatever happened. I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure of what was going on. And then when I did the chat and I learned all that, and then I started reading his book, I was like, what in the? You read the book? Finish it, but I read a good bit of it. And I was like, and he even talks about the camel shoot in it. With it so that made me happy. Um, I think that he calls her Hannah or something, which is funny. Um, so he, he brings, like, you can tell a lot of it is, like, brought from real life. So, I mean. Oh, I, think, I can't say, I'm not, mm-mm. And I'm not surprised. It is a fictional book based in a fictional world inspired by real life experiences. Yep. So. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not surprised by any of it. I just, I'm sad that he had to deal with all that. Um, That's a lot. Fuck. Um, just to be, you know, just, just feel like she kind of walks all over everyone she works with. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Don't kill me. Um, and then your post, and then your, and then your post career as a model, huh? As in, and then your post career as a model. Oh well, so I've bounced around so much. 
um, and like gone like in and out of modeling and back to school and out of it. So it's been all over the place. But um, I, you know, I lived in LA, Miami, I'm in Hollywood now, um, New York. Um, I did some Project Runway stuff. Um, I mean, mostly just a lot of print stuff. Walked in a few fashion weeks. Um, like Pamela Rowland, Hanky Panky, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. I haven't been like Vogue or anything. Um, you know, again, a lot of this stuff, I feel like I've, uh, had a slightly hindered career from the show, but you know, I'm kind of branching off into, I've done some other reality TV show stuff, um, have a project possibly coming up soon. We shall see. Congrats. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've just been, you know, modeling where I can and, uh, continuing education when I can and seeing where life takes me so that's exciting good like i'm it, I, I i love seeing you girls like this um because you know and i haven't said this in a long time but you know top model is my second favorite show of all time because nothing will ever be charm charm is permanently my number one show of all time but top model um just hold will forever hold a special place in my heart um, because it really gave me identity growing up and just seeing you girls compete and all the creativity and the photo shoots, it really informs me. And now that I'm, now that I'm, you know, who I am and the things that I do, for, you know, whatever, whatever, I always go back to like the things I saw on Top Model. So I'm always so grateful, one, to talk to you girls, but then also to see like you girls grow up and to hear yeah. like the things you girls are interested in, how you guys rationalize and break down what you guys did in the past and it's been nothing but a joy watching molly right now talk and just hearing everything that you're going to go do and you want to do is very beautiful to me i'm pretty sure to so many other people watching thank you that means a lot um you know it's it's been a crazy road but uh not just not just you i've heard from i mean for 10 years people will message me still um just saying like the same thing you did you know you this show was such a big part of my childhood, my adolescence. It helped me to find myself, my identity to, you know, and, and a lot of like young gay men too, and, and young models and people just kind of struggling to find their place or what they want to do. And even if my story isn't exactly like theirs, just to see that I've in any way, shape or form inspired, helped or just made someone feel nice is great and like i just am so grateful for the support like you know i'm i'm pretty lame so for anyone <laughs> you know want to hear me talk is great and um i'm just i'm thankful for you having me so oh you're in california right i'm in hollywood florida right now you're in florida Place. Yes, yes, I was in New York and then pandemic was crazy and so I came down here free rent and I uh, maybe going Hollywood, back. Florida is right around from the um neighborhood I grew up in. Really where? I grew up in Oakland Park. Okay, and I I I mean I don't know if I've been there, but I know that's called. Cool. That's funny. Are you are are you like going out? Like are you are are you you're not really going out? Oh that sucks. Because I have a booking in about three weeks in that area. Um, I mean, I'd go out for you, maybe, but and I'm you put on a face mask because I've already I've I've invited Kenya, I've invited Anshul, I've invited um Renee. I've, I I'm friends with Anshul. I've never met her, but she's so amazing. And now that I know that you're in Hollywood, Florida, because of, okay, you know, listen, li okay, l let me talk my shit for two seconds. Listen, when the girls call the nerd to come do the things or the things, listen, y'all just don't even be doing top model chats. Y'all need to get into other stuff that, that I've been doing for a while. You know, I mean, nice accommodation, stuff like that. So I would love if you girls came to my hotel room and then we can link and drink and clink and then we can go to the booking and we can have fun and it'd just be amazing. I'm down, I'm down. I, I mean, I don't, like I went out to eat yesterday, um, but yeah, I don't go out to, clubs or anything but like if i did i'd wear i'd wear a mask i'm the, very paranoid but um oh yeah miss oliver's gonna be masked up I'm yeah like, I'm, I'm i may come in there with a spacesuit like we don't care and it's like okay i care but um but yeah i mean if it's like 
you know, as long as I'm not in a club packed with people breathing in my face, I'm good. I'm so down. Well, 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 I took this particular one because, and I've, I've done it, I've gone to their place before, they have an open concept. So the, the, the main space is outside. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't, I've been, I really have done like two, three, three, three things since March. Um, one where everyone had to get COVID tested beforehand. That was a, a job event. And then, um, yeah, and then I got tested and saw my parents. So literally I've done, I've done like nothing. I've eaten at like four restaurants and I watch Netflix and I go to Dollar Tree. Yeah, no, no, you girls will be okay because Miss Oliver does have, I have rules. I, so y'all will be okay. And I've been, I've been working, so I don't have the COVID and yeah. I've been at home. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk, we'll talk about it. Listen, Molly, thank you again so much. Any fun? Oh, let me ask my final question. Yeah. If you were in front of Tyra Banks right now, what would you say? Um, hmm. I want to say like, you know, you've always been my idol, but I wish you would appreciate and give the girls some recognition because I mean, who would she be without, like, yes, yeah, she'd be a supermodel. Yes. But like, who would she be without all of these girls? You know? So it's like, I, I've kind of lost some respect that I had for her growing up after seeing the way she's treated people who don't make her money. So I wish she would just treat everyone with what they deserve, you know? That's fair. That's fair to ask. Well, Listen, fine. what'd you say? Nothing, nothing. No, what did you say? You Tyra. <laughs> <laughs> Tyra, it's a love hate. So. And with that, Molly, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everyone, please give Molly O'Connell a grand round of applause, positive energy, kisses, and hugs as we wave goodbye to her from doing a freaking amazing chat about Top Model Cycle 16. Thank you. Thank you guys for the questions. It was really fun. Lots of new questions. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully no one bo bothers you again. I'm always bothered. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to DM you my number. Yes, DM me. Let's for real, for real. I want to, I'm down. So. Mm. Until next time. Bye, Molly. Bye. Bye, everybody. Well, that was fun. Y'all saw how I pulled my hair out today? Because I, I said, well, I'm going on a thing with Molly, and I know she's going to be done, and there's no way I need to be da 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 So let me, let me smoky this eye. Let me cut the jaw. Have, have, are y'all paying attention to my jaw? I get better each and every time. I put on a little bronzer right here. Give me any makeup challenge and I will crush the girls. Okay, as you guys know, this video will be uploaded to my YouTube channel later. That's Oliver Twix, T-W-I-X-T, on YouTube. And you can watch this video as well as the dozen. I've got somebody, somebody was supposed to DM me the number of chats I've done, guys. And you guys still haven't done it. Why are you... Grace Jones will, yes, I love Grace Jones. I want to meet her before, before the time comes, if you know what I mean. I just want to tell her thank you. Um, but anyways, you can watch this video and so many other top model chats, including Jay Manuel. I think everyone forgets that I talked to him. Go watch that one. Go watch all the other crazy ones and let me know what you guys think. Please comment below, share, comment, subscribe. Shout out to my YouTubers who will watch this. I love you guys. Please be safe. You guys are um, amazing. And like I always tell you guys, be sure to pray in Kegel. Because um, when me and Molly Link come in Florida, we definitely going to have to walk around with tight, grand, high supreme birthday. Eating barbecue. I'm just <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Come, come home. Na, na, na. <laughs>